Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to RV Talk Radio. It's nice to have you. This is episode 97, and i uh, got a few things to talk about. I want to talk about kids a little. I want to talk about conquering grandkids and a tour that I went on that was quite fascinating. So well, let's get started. Well, I survived it. Yep. So last week I was telling you my greatest fear was happening is I knew that eventually what's going to happen is uh, my daughter, you know, we live by our daughter now, which has three kids and two of them are teenagers now, but one of them's five. And, uh, you know, we got the ultimate phone call, uh, mom, dad, it's our anniversary and we want to, uh, see if you'd watch <laughs> your grandson. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. And so it's kind of like, oh yeah, we're kind of excited and Oh yeah, we haven't had kids around for a long time, <clears throat> and uh, uh, so you know, all of our kids are in their thirties now. And no, we're not old farts yet, but we're kind of close. But anyway, we're in our mid fifties. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so Sherry's probably more excited about it than I am because um, I don't know what it is. As a grandpa, you you, you want to entertain your kid but at the same time you want to coach them and train them and and make them great citizens and all that stuff so you get kind of torn so he's like first thing is like right we got to get the mindset right uh we want them to have a good time at grandma and grandpa's but at the same time I, you know i don't want them swinging from the chandeliers uh that would be a no-no <laughs> so anyway not that he would but so i think the mindset was probably worse than the actual, the occurrence of having him over for the weekend. So, uh, uh, I think the biggest thing we noticed was, uh, you know, we were thinking, oh, you know, get over here. Grandma and grandpa don't have like electronic games and things like that. But we ended up watching a show all day long called PJ Mask. And if you have grandkids, you probably know what this is. And it's on, I believe, Netflix. And it was on all day, all evening, and the next morning. And I can tell you right now, I'll never watch another PJ Mask again if I, until, of course, till he gets here again. Oh my gosh. It's just, uh, I, I don't understand why Looney Tunes is not back on because they were much more entertaining as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, so that was the first torture, but I mean, again, it was worse things, I guess, like, you know, Fox News or PJ Mask, I guess PJ Mask is much more entertaining. But, um, yeah, so we had that on the whole time. And the other anticipation, I thought, well, you won't like the food we eat because Sherry and I are vegetarians. And uh, that was wrong, too. He did just fine with that. And so I'm thinking, here we go. We got the great big um, bedroom all set up for him. He'll be terrified. And he was fine. <laughs> he went to, he got kind of pooped out around 9 30, 10 o'clock. Sherry sure took him into the bedroom and he just passed out. And uh, so then, of course, Sherry and I can't sleep very well because we're thinking. You know, he's going to be in a strange bedroom and he's going to be maybe freak out and all that stuff. So we're kind of sleeping lightly, afraid that we won't hear him or something. So we don't sleep with a hoot. And it turns out he was just fine. In fact, after our terrible night sleep, um, which he he was fine, uh, we were up like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and he slept till almost 10. So he was just fine. Uh, and I think the biggest thing is he doesn't have any pets at home. So he loved the cat and he was constantly trying to figure out where the cat was hiding. 
And uh, I think the cat was playing tag with him. I'm pretty sure of it. So that was quite good to keep him entertained other than keeping him out of rooms he shouldn't be in. Um, but the dog, Cinder. I think Cinder thought he was just one big piece of candy because all she wanted to do all the time was lick the dog, the kid <laughs> to death. So he was like, Cinder, stop, stop, stop. And Cinder's like, you taste so good. <laughs> anyway... So he wasn't that pleased with the dog other than being able to throw the ball in the pool and let her go swimming. She thought he thinks that's pretty cool. But other than that, the dog didn't impress him, but the cat did. So the moral of the story is is probably uh, mindset-wise, mom and uh, grandma and grandpa uh, probably overthought everything. Uh, and... Uh, the simplest of things was fun to do. We actually just went out in the front yard and washed Sherry's car, and he had a blast helping out with that. And uh, we had to get some soap or stuff we keep in the boat, so he thought it was really cool. He could climb up in the boat, even though it was just sitting on the side of the house. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I don't know. It was um, um, actually not a bad um, weekend, but I think uh, by the time the weekend was over, uh, he, you know, he got picked up Sunday about just a little bit afternoon. Uh, Sherry and I both were kind of like, boy, it was, I don't know how to describe it. It felt like we were stuck at home, even though we probably would have stayed home. But when you know you can't really leave and do things the way you normally do, you feel like, ah, <laughs> you're trapped. And it's kind of like if you're a, a working couple. <clears throat> and you only have one car, the person who doesn't have the other car feels like they're stranded, even though they may not even want to leave that day. <laughs> but just the fact that you know you don't have your own car, that's why sharing a, could never share one car. And uh, uh, Which you know is a feeling you get sometimes when you're RV, or sometimes you can only bring one vehicle, which is normal. Um if one's working or doing something like that, the other person doesn't have transportation anymore. So uh, it's that's a mindset thing too. But anyway, overall, we conquered our greatest fear. We made it through the weekend for the first time with our grandchild. And he had a great time. And grandma and grandpa will probably have a better time next time now that we know how it's going to go. <laughs> so moral of the story is, I don't know what there is. <laughs> for a moral but we survived it and it was fine so let's move on well over the weekend i also got uh, an invitation to a tour of a company that um uh, might surprise you a little bit um and i think this is rv related because i meet so many people that do it too and that's vaporing which is alternative to cigarettes and the reason I'm so pro on that is some of you know that I quit smoking five years ago. Uh, I used Chantix. And then, but the problem is, and a lot of you would know this if you've been a smoker for a while, is you miss the habit. And sometimes you miss that break time. So my other solution to quit smoking was I uh, learned about vaporing. And uh, <clears throat> I know it's uh, still a form of smoking in a way, but... Um, it's a lot less uh, severe on your lungs and all that stuff. So, um, And then when it comes to nicotine, you can actually reduce it to a, such a low level um, or just eliminate it totally uh, that you're not dependent on it anymore. So I'll, I'll, I'm not going to get into the science of all of it and stuff. But uh, um, when I was a smoker, I smoked menthol cigarettes. And so I tend to like something that's minty or uh, uh, spearmint kind of taste to it. Um, so it took me a while. To, um, I almost ended up smoking again because I just I, I couldn't. I wanted that break time. <clears throat> so that um, for those of you who may smoke or or vapor now, you know there's all kinds of stuff. Well, I started out with a thing called blue, which looks like a cigarette. They're black, um, but it just didn't fulfill that need of the habit part 
And so it took me a while before I kind of discovered the, the battery and tank thing. And then you find out there's like tons of flavors out there. And none of those really did much for me because I was a menthol smoker until I came across the menthol, kind of what they call juice. And I finally came across one I really, really liked up in Washington called uh, Extreme Ice. Which has a real um, uh, minty kind of uh, taste to it and a coldness to it, and uh, it, it like it once again. If you're a smoker or a vapor, you kind of understand what I'm talking about. And then having the right equipment um, helps a lot too. Once you get that combination set, um, you can be quite content. And let me tell you one thing: it's like an instant. Uh, a raise in income because you know cigarettes can get between nine to if you live in Hawaii here it is get as high as thirteen dollars a pack and uh, so you're automatically going to save about three hundred dollars a month right off the bat and you don't notice it right away until you realize that boy you have forty dollars in your wallet and a couple of days later you still have forty dollars in your wallet amazing you're not swinging by the store to buy cigarettes so anyway this Mount Baker vapor was the only one that had this flavor I liked. So you could order it online back then. It's like five years ago. <clears throat> and uh, um, so pretty much that's where I got my, what they call extreme ice from. And so as we traveled and stuff like that, it, it, when I needed, you know, uh, I'd buy enough for quite a long time and I'd have it sent to wherever we could have it sent to when I needed it. And uh, eventually, you guys know the old story, you know, we traveled for quite a long time and then we ended up in uh, Arizona and we bought a house here and I've been ordering my extreme ice and I started real seeing on my receipts that they are in the same city that I am now, which is Mesa, uh, Arizona. And it's like, whoa, when did that happen? I didn't really notice it. So uh, now when I want to get some of this juice uh, or what they call a... Uh, uh, extreme ice. Uh, I actually, you know, got the address, went to the little store, and started buying it there. And uh, got the, you know, you start getting to know the people there. <clears throat> and of course, you know, I tell them that we have the podcast and stuff. And and uh, uh, as time went on, and, and uh, long story short, uh, they get to know me pretty well. And I got a personal invitation to go on one of their, on a tour of their company. And, uh, uh, this would be the first time they've ever done anything like that. And it would be like, they actually invited like six people. And, uh, so gosh, I was, wasn't going to pass that up. I was kind of fascinated about how all this stuff worked. So, uh, I definitely wanted to go, which happened to be the same weekend that we're watching a grandkid, but Sherry said, no problem. I know you'd like to go. Go check it out. So I did, and this is what I found out. First of all, you get kind of the mindset. You're thinking, you know, it's a bunch of you know young adults sitting in the back room mixing chemicals together and and, and uh, doing it, and and that's so so wrong. <laughs> so that's not the case at all. Uh, it's actually a, what was really amazing about this Mount Baker Vapor place is first of all they have over a hundred employees, and then. Of course, the little store in the front, and it's a pretty professional-looking building. Uh, I'm thinking it's a pretty small operation, and, and it turns out they actually leased the entire building. <laughs> it's like a big building. So uh, uh, first thing is we went in there, and we got to try out some of their new products. And, of course, they're into marketing and advertising, so they're trying to uh, uh, capture people, especially like me in my age, where we're kind of like been smoking forever, and, you know, to comprehend that vaporing might be an alternative to try to quit smoking. Um, we're the target of trying to, you know, of what they're trying to advertise and market to. So uh, why not give a tour and work with somebody that's in that age bracket? Me. Huh? And there's younger folks there, too. And their vaporing was actually all of them I met uh, all had the same reason for vaporing. They wanted to quit smoking. And, um, uh, uh, but they, uh, between smoking or what they call making a lot a big cloud, if, I know it sounds funny, but a smoker tends to 
suck on a cigarette, hold it in your mouth, and then inhale. And then a cloud kind of person will inhale it straight to the lungs and then blow it, and they want this big cloud thing. It's a sensation thing. So I know it sounds funny, but um, if you're a smoker, you'd understand what I'm talking about. So it was really good that they had such a diverse people there because I tend to use it like a cigarette, and and the other ones use it like a big huff type thing. And so it was interesting to talk to them and see like equipment and flavors and stuff are a lot more important um, to someone like that as opposed to someone like me where you want a device that worked more uh, easier like a cigarette. And so that was the first kind of fascination. And uh, and, and once again, I know uh, so many RVers either smoke or they vapor. Uh, I find this... Um, subject to be quite appropriate for RV Talk Radio. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, this company and uh, uh, and 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 after talking to them, they're actually going to set up an affiliate program with us where we might be able to save you guys some money to get your products. And, uh, and believe me, once I tell you about this company, you'll want to do business with them because they were amazing. Now understand when you're dealing with nicotine, uh, uh, before uh, e-cigarettes came out, uh, it was kind of like under the table, kind of uh, shoot from the hip kind of thing, and everything came from China, and a lot of stuff still comes from China because the parts are cheap are cheaper to build over there. Uh, but the FDA uh, was concerned about the nicotine. And because it considered a hazardous waste kind of thing or a chemical. And so they wanted to regulate it. So uh, apparently, I don't know all the laws and stuff, but around 2009, 10, 11, things changed and it was acceptable. And you notice uh, vapor shops or e cigarette shops have popped up everywhere. And uh, so fda says okay if you're going to sell this stuff you have to meet our regulations so nicotine's considered a, a hazard or, or a, a chemical so it's got to be locked up and when it's uh, worked with it's got to be kept in a clean room situation uh when it's uh being disposed of it's got to be uh treated like hazardous waste just like a medical place needs to uh, uh treat needles and, and drugs and, and uh, blood and things like that is hazardous waste. So uh, quite the regulations on how to deal with that chemical. And then at the same time, uh, to deal with that chemical and to make these products and these bottles and stuff, it's you have to uh, run a very sanitary situation where in their bottling room, it was literally a uh, clean room where you come in and you're covered with a white outfit and your shoes and your face and your hair, hair nets, the whole worst, a face mask um, to uh, for extreme clean situation. And that's exactly what they had. And it was a uh, uh, truly amazing, uh, very expensive equipment and very... Uh, um, detailed um scenario because you know they have to meet the regulations of the fda and so uh i mean amazingly you know my head's just going whoa just exploding because like you have this picture in your head of like you know a couple of young adults sitting in the back room mixing a bunch of chemicals and then putting a label on it not so uh this was quite a professional uh, situation we're talking about 100 employees it's just like an aerospace company, well laid out, inventory control systems, uh, very controlled scenarios, marketing, uh, customer service, uh, all of the above. And uh, uh, that was really cool because then we got, uh, they took us into the warehouse where you got all these different chemicals and different flavors and then a mixing area and uh, everything's done precisely and measured precisely and tested precisely and uh, bottled precisely and meeting the requirements of the FDA. Um, it was amazing. And in total, um, inventory control systems, um, testing equipment, it was just amazing um, and incredibly friendly people. And they were so 
this was their very first tour, and I, I'm hoping that way it was a great uh, uh, situation. We get to try some flavors that they were doing, some different kinds of uh, devices that they're uh, uh, coming up with and wanted to have us try them. And uh, it was great. And then we filled out uh, uh, a questionnaire uh, of what we thought of uh, what we tested and put it in writing. Uh, great, great uh, scenario for everybody. And I was so grateful I got to go on a tour, and I'm so grateful I was invited. And so uh, what I'll do uh, as soon as I can is I will put a link to their site but in the future shows, I'm going to see if I can't, uh, and, and they want to, uh, give all of our listeners a discount or some kind of a program where they can order through us and save some money. And so, uh, and I, I would not push these guys if I wasn't sold that these guys were not only legit, but very customer friendly, very, very professional very very safe uh it was amazing and i can't thank mount baker vapor enough for uh their hospitality and if you're a vapor or thinking you want to quit smoking um they're the company to go to uh some of these other ones i kind of like uh they're makeshift and stuff and um not only do it does mount vape <laughs> Mount Baker Vapor have to do everything professional. Their vendors do too, and they don't. Um, that's a problem. And so they run a tight ship, a very tight ship. And uh, all I can say is if you're looking for quality, and you're looking for consistency, and you're looking for uh, professional, clean, um, meeting the regulations and doing things right, then Mount Baker Vapor is definitely the company you should deal with for vaporing or e-cigarette needs. Uh, great, great company. So yeah, let's move on. Well, I want to bring up a subject only because it's worth talking about. And um, what I want to get is you know comments and, and ideas from folks. I'm not looking for being nasty to each other, but I am going to bring up a sensitive subject, and and that subject is RVers and having and raising kids in the RV environment. And I and I'm going to spill that over to even like the boating or the sailing uh, cruisers, you know, that go around the world with children and stuff. Is, and what I want to hear is the pros and cons of what you think, or if you're actually somebody out there that have kids out there, uh, the pros and cons or concerns you might have about that. But it still sets f funny, it, it, and, and it could be an old school to new school thing. And you know our last show, um, I think two shows ago, we talked about homeschooling. And uh, of course, we... You know, the first thing you get concerned about is, is the parents following through? They say, well, I'm homeschooling my kid. Well, some take that very serious where others just like, ah, oh, just go watch the videos on the network and then, you know, and uh, answer the questions and take credit. And are the kids really getting a good education? That's one thing right there. And so we kind of talked about that already, but, you know, there's a couple of channels out there that have either, you know, kids with them or, there's even one out there that's expecting a child. And, and it's like, really, is the RV environment really going to be a great place for a, like a newborn? Really? I mean, uh, I know I was uh, showing I was traveling with the fifth wheel. We were on our way up to Fallon, Nevada, just spending the night. And there was a kind of an older Class C with a couple in it and a baby. And the baby was having a... Uh, a rough night and so crying a lot and all that stuff the thing is you can't cover up sound very well so we're right next door to a screaming baby in an rv parking lot i mean it's like really uh, i don't know it just and it was kind of cold i don't know how well their heating was over there and stuff but you know uh, um i mean you don't have much room it was a much smaller rig than our fifth wheel and, you know, what about crawling and walking and all that stuff? Uh, um, I, I don't know what to th say or, or, or 
I mean, is is really, I mean, is, is there a time where you might want to just say, you know what, let's hang this traveling up. I know it's, it's a being selfish in a way. It's like, well, we're doing the, the traveling because me and my husband or me and my partner uh, like it. And so just because we're having a child or we have a child, uh, it's more about me. <laughs> is it more about me or is it more about, I mean, I, as a parent, a lot of you know that your whole life starts to dwell around your own kids. And uh, for 20 years, pretty much your whole life is developing your children to be adults. So the question is, is like, all right, um, if I'm going to be a parent, am I, I need to set up a, a, a scenario that's a win-win for my child, can grow up and develop uh, as naturally as possible, uh, give them an environment to be social, give them an environment that have something that they can call their own. Um, I have, give them a scenario of a place that they can play and feel like it's theirs. Um, is that a reasonable thing to think about as an RVer or, or a sailor or cruising? I mean, there's like cruising couples out there with children that are actually kind of staying together and doing homeschooling and trying to use their sailing um, environment as a teaching platform. And that's good. I don't, I don't disagree with that uh, at all. And, and I'm sure our viewers are doing the same. But in general, I mean, and once again, some people say, well, that's your opinion, Rob. And no, not necessarily is my opinion. It's, it's kind of like things I hear about or, can, or we hear in discussions. And so I'm not, uh, I probably uh, will definitely sway towards old school more. But uh, I'm also, if you watch other shows, open-minded to the different environments. But at the same time, we're, uh, that's why we're a talk radio is like, um, uh, and of course, anybody is out there that is an RV or that has kids and stuff would like to be uh, on our show. Uh, it'd be great, and and we're talking about the pros and cons of it, and so uh, and discussions, and that's what our show is all about—the lifestyles. And so, uh, what would I mean? Uh, <laughs> Could there even be laws in the future saying, you know, parents are required to do such and such for kids? Um, because there's great models out there, but there's also bad models of it. And the only person that suffers is the children themselves. Uh, you know, there's good parents and bad parents. And that's true whether you're an RV or a sailing or you own a home uh, or renting a home or live in an apartment. Uh, and of course, um, income has a lot to do with that. Maybe when you're traveling and maybe you do have a good income, your ex income's more flexible to do other things that are great for the children. Uh, so, uh, environment, uh, income, uh, your status, uh, social status, all those things are, are definitely a factor in this. And it's like, everybody's just trying to do what's best for their children. Um, but, uh, where do you draw the line or do you i don't know i i really love to hear more comments about that uh some especially as a newborn um how, uh, what are some of the uh, uh equipment some of the procedures some of the processes you're used to go through that the motions as 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 a traveling new parent with a brand new newborn or uh, all that stuff. And, and, of course, how do you handle health issues? Especially if you're a cruiser and you're not even in our country and you're going from country to country. Uh, you know, vaccines, all these different things. Uh, how are they dealt with? And are they even dealt with at all? I don't know. But it's definitely an interesting subject. Uh, sometimes concerning subject. Because not everybody's that good at homeschooling and that... And, and uh, is the environment safe? Of course, if you're going to some places that your kids uh, might go to that aren't exactly the most healthiest places or is the safest places, 
uh, kids have learned to grow up in the Northwest and they come down here to the South. Um, you know, there's different critters and different things to deal with. And so, uh, uh, and of course, if you go uh, East, there's other issues. You go out of this country, there's even more. And uh, uh, are you putting your kids at risk? I don't know. So anyway, I'd love to hear comments. Uh, I prefer that they were professional, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. That's okay. Uh, but I'd love to ha hear this and maybe even take this discussion farther uh, from comments. And, uh, and of course, if anybody wants to be interviewed, uh, the pros and cons of this. Uh, once again, it, uh, I know people attack me a lot of times saying, well, Rob, it's their business, not yours. But it's a RV lifestyle thing, and and people that listen to our show, some are young adults, some are mid range, some are older, and some are thinking about coming out here and becoming RVers, and so they need shows like this to help with their decision process. We shouldn't be just advocates for being RVers uh, without showing the pros and cons of this lifestyle. Uh, maybe uh, RVing is good just as a part-time thing or a seasonal thing for people instead of full-time. I see so many channels that are just like, come on out of here, live the freedom and all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you're not telling the whole story. And you see our videos and you see our shows and it's only a five-minute, ten-minute show of your life and you're not seeing the real thing out there. And uh, at least with the uh, radio show, we have to spend a little more time in detail of what really is going on out here and uh, uh, paint a more a better or more clear picture of well, what this full-time RV lifestyle is good for uh, at all age levels and all career levels and also raising a family, uh, things to consider. So, yeah. Love to hear your comments. Let's move on. Yeah, I caught the video here from a cheap RV living uh, called the RTR, which is over at Courtside, which is a rendezvous. Uh, one <laughs> rendezvous. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, that they do every year. I think it's called Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. And... Uh, Boy, that's a word I have a hard time with. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and I get a kick because the first thing he kind of says is, well, we're kind of rebels or we're uh, outcasts. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, I guess I, I guess that's true I, a little bit. But at the same time, it's, uh, you know, I get quite a turnout. He's saying he's, he claims that there's about 500 plus or minus uh, that show up. And so he was uh, addressing some of the questions and and uh, concerns of people that want to go to this rendezvous. And uh, anyway, uh, I'm not uh, advertising it, nor am I denying it uh, of uh, a good or bad thing to go to. Uh, Courtside's a, a, a big place that a lot of RVers go to, including uh, uh, van dwellers. And, uh, uh, and it can be very, it is a very friendly and a great community of people. Uh, and, and it is a fairly, uh, uh, safe environment. And so, uh, I encourage you if you ever get a chance to go to courtside, if you haven't done it yet, uh, it's quite the experience, no doubt. But, uh, uh, yeah, the big RTR is coming up, and uh, it's a little controversial whether it's you know uh, considered a event that should be licensed and sponsored or um, insured. At the same time, courtside's a great big place where people uh, come together anyway. So uh, you know uh, you might want to keep that in mind that it's not insured and it's not a uh, uh, a protected event, uh, nor is it permitted, you know, have a permit to do so. But it's actually part of a big group of people that go to the courtside anyway, so it's kind of a gray area. So uh, it's up to you whether it's something you want to go to, but it sounds like fun if you're a person that's into uh, van dwelling and stuff like that. Um, at the same time, it's uh, a bunch of rebels, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Um, 
that are breaking the norm of everyday society, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. So yeah, it's coming up. One of the things he stressed in his video was the fact that there's uh, uh, folks that come here and they have generators and play music and things like that. And that kind of goes back to the module I was talking about with kids and stuff is um, introvert kind of people. They like to be, you know, uh, on their own. They like their privacy and things like that. Well, there's a kind of controversy there. It's like, okay, so you want to be independent and you want to be not the norm and outside of the society. So then they, all of a sudden you say, well, let's do a RTR and let's bring all this together and be a community. Well, when you do that, then you suddenly are exposed to everybody's personal favorite things that they want to do, whether it's play music of different variations, uh, drinking, uh, being out late, talking, a group, laughing loud, uh, a group around a fire, being noisy, generators, uh, on and on. And so you do have to consider the fact that when you're bringing this group together, now you're a community and uh, of people with different values and different uh, uh, beliefs and different uh, things that they enjoy. Somebody, uh, when it comes to music, somebody might just like to hear um, pan flute. And the next one wants to hear Aerosmith. Uh, big difference. And so it can be quite irritating. Uh, sounds like they, they kind of want to uh, section out that kind of thing. Uh, good luck on that. But do realize that if you're going to a community, the downside is uh, each individual, which are used to being on their own, are uh, going to be exposing their personal beliefs and personal uh, things that they like to do as being a nomad or a van dweller. And uh, and that's true not only with this van, this RTR thing, but also if you're going to courtside, uh, you know, there's folks uh, from uh, different groups like uh, escapees and escapers, uh, uh, different age groups, etc. So it's Probably the most important thing to remember is to locate yourself to where you feel most comfortable. You don't have to be amongst the bigger groups. There's so much land there, so much space that you can put yourself outside of that and then just come in and kind of give yourself visitation rights and, and expose yourself to what you can handle. So, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, sounds like fun. At the same time, it's a desert, guys. The biggest kick I get out of his vi video is, you know, most nomadic people are kind of uh, introverts, as he, as he words it. Uh, want to be out of the crowds, want to be um, on their own. They want to be uh, part of their own unique living. And so this whole video is all these things that they don't want you to do. And yet when you bring people together and they bring in all their personal things, whether it's their pets the music, the generators, their uh, uh, drug use or things like that. Uh, it's pretty hard to avoid. And so it sounds like last year he must have lost it or uh, things got out of control. And 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 the guy, this Bob guy is like, this is my event. Um, well, it's... <laughs> If it was a permitted event and stuff like that, and it was cordoned off and all that stuff, maybe so. But it's the uh, BLM land, and it's uh, people's freedom and people's uh, personal uh, way that they see life, and it's you're not going to control that. So be aware. Uh, it sounds like a fun thing to do, but you also have to have an open mind. And, uh, you know, you're going to have pets and you're going to have people that won't put their pets on the leash and, and, uh, dogs, uh, pooping and things like that. And, and other people playing music and other people actually playing instruments and others being loud and some up all night talking and laughing. It's going to happen. It's just going to happen. And it ha actually happens in RV parks too. So that's part of the downside of, RV lifestyle, you might say, is you think you're being private. You think you're getting your privacy, but our walls are thin and uh, you need to know that and you need to also be flexible. And uh, this RTR thing, once again, could be a lot of fun, but at the same time, you're going to have to be open-minded 
and realize that everybody's going to be different and you need to either tolerate or get out uh, or move to a different spot and do it in a, you know, a way that's doesn't turn out to be a community fight. <laughs> and it uh, sounds like last year or something like that happened. So keep it in mind if you're going to this thing. In conclusion, uh, watching this, I, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is this guy must be a glutton for punishment <laughs> because, you know, you always got that 1% that this causes issues or uh, uh, makes the event sour. And, uh, and, of course, when you start getting gatherings and stuff like that, you start falling under permits and issues and, and uh, support and porta uh, porta potties and stuff like that so keep that all in mind and it i'm sure he would appreciate if you contributed in a positive way but uh it also sounds like by the way that there's opportunities of uh, uh working with the vendors there and actually get a job for a while and get um, I'm probably a lot of it's under the table but uh opportunity to do so uh not to mention this is a great time of year for uh jobs at amazon for the season <clears throat> So keep that in mind. Uh, so anyway, uh, I don't know what to say about something like that other than it's, you know, uh, law of attraction, you might say, like attracts like. Um, it's going to be folks with like-minded people uh, that are doing this independent living. And uh, if that's something that uh, you would enjoy or think you'd like to try, uh it might be the best place to go before you actually do it and actually get a true, at least get the, tr you know, everybody likes to talk up their stuff, but try to get the true picture of that lifestyle and see if it's something that you would like to do or might help you uh, make your life a little more complete. I know it sounds funny, but you know, so many people living at, um, at the max paycheck, the paycheck and the whole works and, um, or maybe they're in a fixed income. Uh, this is a solution to that. It's a way to live with a lower overhead. And so it's something to keep in mind. It's not something for me, <laughs> but at the same time, I still try to keep my mind open enough to say I could see how it works for others and uh, keep that in mind. But just remember when you bring a group of people together, you uh, need to open your mind up and be... Um, uh, open-minded to the fact that you're going to be around different personalities and different generations. Uh, the youngins, um, they have more of a it's all about me kind of lifestyle as opposed to older folks that have kind of principles and uh, morals of the past. And so when you bring those together, it can clash. And so uh, the best thing you do is open your mind. So anyway... RTR, if you get a chance to make it and you're interested in van life or independent living, uh, sounds like that they got some good things, good seminars, good things to, uh, to uh, learn from others and also to be part of a community. Well, that kind of wraps up today's show. I want to remind you that we created a new podcast called old time radio and what it is is basically old time radio all kinds of things uh gun smoke a lone ranger the inner sanctum uh on and on we got all kinds of stuff coming out and we're launching as many shows we can per day and uh they're just great and if you're a traveler uh these shows are great they tend to be around a half hour uh long each but there are longer ones we are launching war of the worlds from uh, orson wells on monday or today no um tomorrow on tuesday anyway um just great shows and if you enjoy um good stories uh there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of them to choose from we uh launched uh 10 uh, halloween shows here over the weekend and it's just good stuff uh, fun to uh, listen to and it's great while you're traveling. Great when you're, uh, uh, I suggest everybody in courtside, <laughs> listen to them. Uh, good stuff. And you can uh, pull them up on your podcast software on your cell phone. So anyway, keep in mind, goodoldradio.com. It's a podcast. So uh, yeah, just put that into your uh, phone. Type in, just type in good old uh, radio uh, and it will show up and you can subscribe and 
the shows will keep coming. There will be hundreds of them. So, yeah, no lack of material. So, anyway, I want to thank everybody for listening this week. Uh, we survived uh, taking care of the grandkid over the weekend. Lots of great things happening. Uh, RTR is coming up. And Courtside, of course, just the overall event at Courtside. Um, lots of fun. So, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for listening. Appreciate all the new followers. Appreciate the comments. Uh, we ask everybody to always be professional. We look forward to hearing from you. And most of all, be safe and buy yourself an RV. Have a great week, everyone. Bye now.